how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, hello, I am Kelsey. Thank you so much for joining us today. I sound like I'm on the news. Today's video is going to be all about makeup for photography. So whether that's graduation photos, headshots, maybe like family portraits or engagement photos, this is the type of makeup that I think works best for photography. I have some tips and tricks that I will share with you as I do this makeup. Um, this isn't necessarily what I would do for bridal makeup. I think for brides, you need to be a little bit more glamorous and I will have that video coming up soon. But yes, if you're getting your photo taken soon or if you're just looking for kind of like a full coverage, um, but natural-esque looking type of makeup look, then this is what you will be looking for. So I think we should just jump on into it. All right, to start off, I'm going to be priming my skin. This is a step that I recommend to do regardless of your skin type. Just find a primer that is suited to your skin. I have drier skin, so I love the Too Faced Hangover RX primer, and I find it just helps to really prolong the wear of my makeup. For foundation, I'm going to be taking the Makeup Forever HD foundation. This foundation is so amazing for photos, you guys. It just looks so airbrushed and flawless without being overly cakey. And since it has HD in the title, it is actually meant for photography and for film. And um, I just, I love it. So if you can get your hands on this one, I would highly recommend it. And you know, spending your money on it is totally worth it. But if you can't get this one, just find a foundation that does not have any SPF in it because foundations with SPF will give you that really unattractive white flashback. Now, if you're like me and you need a little bit more extra coverage, just use a concealer that is the same shade as your skin tone. And I'm also going to use this concealer underneath my eyes because I don't want my under eye area to be too bright in a way that is distracting in the photos. So I am using that concealer and then I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this Bare Minerals one because it is a very beautiful light brightening shade. So I'm going to take that one on top of the skin toned one and then once I blend that out with a beauty blender, I think it creates a really beautiful bright under eye area without being too stark white. I also put some concealer on my eyelids to cancel out any veins or redness. Now the next step is powder and this step is super important because in photography you don't want any shininess bouncing off the lights or the lens of the camera so I am just using this powder foundation from Tarte to set all of that foundation in place but also really making sure that it is creating a nice matte finish on my skin. And then for my under eye area, I am going to switch over to the Kat Von D shade and light palette and taking the two lightest shades in there. One is like a light vanilla shade and one is more of a banana shade. I am just setting all of that eye area underneath and on my lid. Using the lightest contour shade from the same palette, I am taking this little contour brush and I am going to contour, of course. Um, I am actually not a fan of contouring on a day-to-day -day basis. It is just not something that I like to spend my time doing and quite frankly, I don't think it looks that good on me. But in photos, it seriously is so flattering and it does make a difference. So it is something that I recommend doing and you don't have to do anything like too crazy and harsh, but just kind of putting some in to the hollows of your cheek along your nose and in your temples will do the trick. I am also going to be bronzing my skin using this lovely light butter bronzer from Physicians Formula. I am just taking a big fluffy brush and going over those contour areas to make it just a little bit less harsh. For blush, I would recommend a nice natural pinky type shade. Blush is a super important step, but it is not something that you want to stand out if this makes sense. You just want a nice natural flush that is going to allow you to look nice and healthy and youthful. The highlighting powders from Hourglass are absolutely perfect for photography. They give you the most beautiful glowing from within look without being overly shiny or shimmery or glittery. They just are ideal when it comes to photography because they're going to highlight your skin in a very natural way. Now for eyebrows, my advice you guys is just to go with what you know. Fill in your brows the way that you would any other day of the week. If you never fill in your eyebrows, give them a little bit of extra definition, but don't do anything over the top or too bold because the last thing you want is to see the photos and think like, what the heck are those eyebrows doing on me? So just go with what you know and err on the side of more natural. For eyeshadow, I recommend doing a mainly matte type of look. I just think that it is super flattering and it just is going to look very pretty and natural. So I'm using the Tartlet palette and using Force of Nature, I am putting that 
all into my crease area and then I'm going to use Super Mom, which is just a nice light vanilla pink shade and put that all over my lid and also on my brow bone to highlight. And then taking this mid-tone brown shade called Dreamer, I am going to be putting that directly into my crease area for a little bit more extra definition. And believe me, you guys, this very light, neutral, matte type of look is just so flattering and so pretty. And in photos, it really allows your beauty to shine through and people will be seeing you and not necessarily makeup, which is exactly what we're going for. I am also going to go back to that Force of Nature shade and put that underneath my lash line again for a little bit of natural definition. And then in place of eyeliner, I am going to take Fashionista from the Tartlet palette and place that along my upper lash line. I love doing this instead of eyeliner. I think it just helps to really define the eyes, but in a more natural way. And I just, I really, really like this. Um, whether it's for photos or not, I think it's super flattering and it's easy as well. I am now applying mascara to my upper and lower lashes before I go in with false lashes, but false lashes are completely optional, you guys. Unless you feel 100% confident with them, I would say just go with mascara because the last thing that you need on an important day is to be struggling with them. So yes, just go with mascara if that's what you're comfortable with. And make sure you highlight your inner corner. I am using that Super Mom shade. It'll just keep things nice and bright. These are the false lashes I used. I wanted to show you guys how natural they are. These ones are from Revlon and they really just give your eyes a little bit of something extra without even really looking like you're wearing false lashes. So I put them on and now I am just blending my natural lashes with my false lashes using a little bit of mascara. Now for lips, you want a shade that is like your lips, but better. You don't want anything too nude or anything too bright, just something in a beautiful neutral you know, your skin shade type, if that makes sense. So this one here is from Tarte and it really is just a nice peachy pink shade. And I'm going to put a little bit of this lip veil from Joe Fresh over top. It's not really a gloss, it just has a little bit of shine to it. So it's going to give my lips a little bit of that like healthy pout. So that completes this tutorial on a makeup for photography. Please tag me on Instagram if you guys do create this look, whether it's for graduation photos or engagement photos or whatever they, that may be. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and please subscribe if you haven't already because it means so much to me and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.